<laughs> hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So, in today's video, we're going to have a bit of a different video and we're here today in Peter's fish room. Now, Peter is a bloke that reached out to me on Facebook. Um, he had a ton of Java moss. I really needed some Java moss for my new fish room. And we got talking. He said, I've got a bunch of tanks. And I said, I really want to come and check it out and do a tour. So, I haven't even had a look at what's in this room yet. Peter's going to show us around. Um, he's got tons of different live food cultures, which I find very interesting and hopefully you guys can learn a bit from this, but without any further ado, let's get started. Right, awesome. So here's the space. Now this is your garage, isn't it? Yeah, this is yeah. the garage. It should be a garage, but it's not anymore. It's a fish room now. Your wife called it the pool room? Yeah, which is... she tried, she tried to be a rumpus room. <laughs> I've turned it so, into room. how many tanks exactly do you have in this room now? I think it's around the 28. 28. Most, mostly working, a couple aren't. A couple okay. are just uh, live food cultures and yeah yeah just breed out tank like this is my grow tank yep. so these i've bred every single fish in that tank you can see all the quarries in the bottom they're yeah. going berserk all the mollies the bread of those um and all the danios and there's uh white clouds up the top or oh, mountain minnows yeah, up the top minnows. yeah yeah pretty proud of those blokes my camera is picking these up really well compared to my fish room we've got no glare it's awesome <laughs> the only thing i didn't breed in there are the uh, the neon tetras, they were yeah. my breeding stock. But what I found is you were speaking in one of your other videos about neon tetra disease. There's a couple of them in there with a bit, mm. but they were really bad at one stage. What I find is when they're in a big community tank with fish that that are more aggressive feeders than they are, they don't seem to get the food as much as the aggressive feeders. Therefore, that's when this disease comes about. Is that um, immunity? Yeah, like, it's yeah. like an immune. Well, they don't feed enough, so they don't get enough nutrients in themselves. But in here, they don't have to. They don't have to compete as much for food. Yeah. Um, I give. I feed all these guys some sort of live food every single day, plus the flake, plus a bit of, plus a bit of uh, granulate, granules, yeah, sure. and all that sort of stuff. Sure. Um, and some wafers. I usually give them either these wafers or I give them uh, just your normal algae wafers. Yeah. Um, that's just for the ones that are a bit slower eating too. They can come down the bottom and always yeah. pick something off. And it's also then during the day you can um, leave it in there while you're at work and yeah. they can still graze on that. Yeah, they still graze on it. This one yeah. here, something I think that you've got is all your matten filters. I discovered matten filters probably two years ago. Right. And um, that's pretty much what led me to your videos. This matten filter here was an experiment yep. I seen from a bloke, Mark's Aquatics. So oh, yeah. Yeah, you I can see all the mould yeah. going through there. I've only just cleaned this up, yeah. but the mulm sits in there. You can see there's a sand-based tank. There's not much mulm in the bottom. It seems to all go through the matten filter really, at some really stage. Good. And um, boy, it was a breeze to clean. I just the only thing I found is when I had all this, all the uh, media in there, it was all loose. It wasn't in bags. Therefore, if I had to get all the media out to actually <laughs> clean it. So now I got it in bags. You take the bags out and then you just suck, suck it all up. out. Oh, for a person. Like your tanks are a bit different. Mine, mine are yeah. all canister filters, um, except for this one. This is just a straight matte filter, which awesome. I find is a fantastic thing. It's really, really working really well. I didn't well. know that it was going to suck up the mold that well, because yeah, yeah, I didn't really notice it. But this is play sand, is it? Yeah, uh, no, it's. I got it from Blake down the coast. You know, I think he's just going to the beach and collecting it, but yeah, I'm not getting it. much salt out of it, so. Yeah, it's just straight white sand, straight straight white mm. beach sand. Yeah, because um, it's so fine, it normally collects the mulm on top. Yeah, yeah, you can see there's a little bit of green in there. If I stir yeah. that up, it'll it'll just it'll dissolve into the water and get sucked in. Yeah, that actually that neon there's got a bit more of that white on it than normal. Well, but, I've got a few at home, all at the fish room that. Have, yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's that. very hard to get that off. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, th these these guys are really they're really uh, healthy. So and they're eating really, really well. Do you, um, with this tank, is this like you're breeding for profit, I guess, tank? You just trade out of this to get fish food and stuff like that? Yeah, pretty much. This this is a grow out tank. Um, I've got a couple of stores that are pretty keen to take uh, mollies off me yep. and, and my quarries. Um, I don't really breed for profit. Um, yep. I respect Blake like yourself getting into it for profit. I, 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 yeah, I reckon it's awesome what you're doing. Um, I, I, look, this is one great big hobby to me. My wife's not happy, but anyway. <laughs> It's an awesome hobby. It yeah. really is. I got some beautiful ones. Like look at that orange, that orange molly. Yeah. I mean, I know mollies are they're just bread and butter species, but you can get some really nice colours. Yeah, and that they're super easy to take care of and yeah. low maintenance and yeah. yeah. No. I, I'm trying to strain, get a strain of uh, the liar tail mollies. Yeah, got yeah. A whole bunch over here. Yeah, that let's, bread. Can I have a look at it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah you can make your way around here. I'll get rid of a bit oh of this food. Oh my gosh, I'm a short <laughs> bloke, so it's gonna be. 
Well, here we go. So these are your lyre tails. Yeah, lyre tails, and I don't know how I got them. See, there's a couple in there that aren't lyre tails, but yep. there's a lot that are. So uh, I find that very strange. I had something similar with my blue stars. Yeah. I bought like they had the single tail, and then they had lyre tails, and I literally took all the single tails out, and then yeah. now I'm getting 90% lyre tails. Yeah. And they look way better with the lyre tails. Yeah. Um, and you can offer them for the same price. Then, you know. I just see one there, might have a bit of a white spot. Ah. Oh. I better fix him up. Uh, yeah, that's not yeah it's a bit of green on the yeah. front. I just haven't got this one. These, this is a, um, this is a hospital tank. Yeah, I had these two. Uh, you can see this one here. See his eyes a little bit bulged. Yeah, Popeye. Hit that Popeye was really bad. I mean, it was nearly yeah. hanging out. And this one here was just beginning to get it. Yep. Um, so I quarantined them. I put a bit of, uh, bit of that multi cure in there. Yeah. Sent a blue. Uh, and you know, I've just been feeding them up and. Look, it doesn't look like it's water change, but I do a regular water change probably yeah. every three or four days. I brought the heat up to around the 30 at the at the time, but I've dropped it now. Um, and they're coming good. They're, they're really healthy in there. I find my uh, black rams were getting a bit of uh, yeah. Popeye at the start, but it normally, for me, it was coming from aggression. Like, yeah. they getting bitten. And yeah. then um, that would happen. Yeah, right, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, with breeding, right? Because yeah. I do a lot of breeding. You're, so, you're mainly breeding uh, Danios, it looks like. I can see there. Is yeah. it? Uh, what are you, yeah, what are you breeding? Okay, so what I'm breeding, yeah. um, these down here are just mountain minnows and there's a couple of gold minnows in there. Yep. See, there's a big female there and I can't get her to lay the eggs. Well, uh, yeah, I can't let her. She might be laying. Yeah, but... so one of my mistakes, I was told, well, a YouTube video said that these, don't, these ones don't predate on their young. And that's okay, they weren't. And I, what I was doing, I was just using a turkey baster and I was pulling the young out and I was bringing them up into this thing. So you can see all these ones in here. I've taken 60 out of here, so that's still what's in there from my original ones. Wow. The problem is, I train these ones to eat live food. So I was dropping in Walter worms and <laughs> Grindle worms and all that, and, and also the brine shrimp. So yeah. a bit like yourself, I've got the two brine yeah, shrimps yeah. going there all the yeah, time. The brine shrimp hatcheries, hey. Yeah, so I, I did it. that, and now they love live food, which means their babies are live food. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, yeah. you're training them to start eating their so young. So training them to eat their young, do. yeah. So I haven't had a young one out of there since, which is okay, because I got that mean they've done what to do with. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, what I normally would do with something like this is just um, I'd have them in there and then I'd take them out. Like, oh, yeah. All the eggs, obviously, you've got the marbles down there yeah. to, as yeah. a tactic. Yeah, to make Sorry sure about the eggs. No, <laughs> don't worry. And, uh, yeah, and then you could leave, take it out and a couple of days later you have a bunch of fries from me in here. Yeah, but, yeah, um, well, that's exactly what I was going to do. I just got too many. And yeah. I also found that if I just pull them out the turkey base and put them in this tank, yeah, um, wasn't so much, it wasn't work. so harsh on those guys. Really, yeah, so much work. And, and you save a tank too. too. That way, yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, awesome. So, so, I mean, so that's what these are. So, that's I bred the, the white clouds. Also, this tank here is just it's on its way out now. I've got to clean it right up. Yep. that's going to be my next neon tetra tank. Right. Um, this one, these both were neon tetra tanks, but I found that my eggs weren't fertile and they were uh, they were they were fungusing up really quick. Okay. A couple of things I found out about that. Um, what I found out with neon tetras is you've got to, oh, sorry about these, these are tiny, danios, aren't they? But Mate, yeah, these yeah. are Danios and they're also barbs. Oh, okay, yeah, I can see the little barb there. These fish here, I suck these out of the, or I clean these out of the um, canister filter from one of my big community tanks over there, the one down the bottom there. <laughs> so I pull them out. Now, uh, I suppose I'm a bit frugal, but I've got this thing of whenever I clean a tank, I never throw the water out. I leave it in a bucket for a week and yep. see if anything happens. And this is what happened. Right. <laughs> I've never even heard of doing that before, but it yeah. seems that it's paying off. First time I ever bred a Danny Hope by accident, yeah. I, I had buckets out the back and through sheer laziness, I left them there for a little bit. And, and I, I was like, I'm, I'm not kidding, it was about six weeks. I went to throw the bucket out thinking, oh, geez, I'm being lazy. And I looked in and there was a dozen Danny Hopes swimming around. <laughs> I thought, oh, wow, how good yeah. am I? <laughs> so, so there must have been some infusoria growing in there with them. But, yeah, um, and then they were just yeah. putting eggs you sucked up with the filter. Yeah, yeah. yeah so there, there they go. So with the neon tetras that you were talking about before, what's... Um, Yes. What are we finding with the... So what I found out, and this is through talking to a few different people, and I think it's Rod from Pet City at Mount Gravatt put me on to another bloke, which is through Fish Fanatics. Yep. They tell me with Neon Tetras, what you've got to do, you've got to do them on a 7 to 10 day cycle. So you put them in a tank, like like they, you explained yep. to everyone, you put them into a tank, you darken it up, you put the peat moss in, you get that pH to the right level, and you make it a dark, you know, like a, 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 a harder tank. A yeah, harder, black water. Yeah, yeah, black, yeah water. black water. Um, you do all that, you chuck them in there, you watch them spawn in the morning, and it's pretty easy to see them spawn, they go berserk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. all seen that. Um, get them out. 
put them in your normal tank again, but do it again in seven days or seven to ten days and then do it again because the first lot of eggs have it, there's a good chance the males might have might have um, been confused and not well not that they might have fertilized the eggs but the eggs were rotten in the female's guts because she's been swimming around for so long with the right. eggs in the stomach and that's why the eggs go white oh, this is okay. what i told okay yeah because i actually in my new fish room i had a brand new spawn yeah maybe 300 eggs like yeah. there's a ton yeah and this huge gravid female yeah and then the male was on on her as well and, and nothing it was yeah crickets and i was super confused so that's right yeah i'm actually going to give that another try yep. so so what i've been days. told yep. is to do it seven to ten days yep. and then get them in there again seven okay. to ten days do it again i'm going to have to do the yeah. series again for sure then to so make sure. What I've done with it, I did it, I did it one go, nothing. Second go, not really anything. Third go, five. Fourth go, twenty-five. They're in that right. tank up there. <laughs> now they're going to be hard to see. Or in not, here. Yeah, in there. Yeah. You oh, might, you can see them. Yeah. So I'll see if I put a bit a of light. Little, yeah, you, I know you don't want to because they're. A no, no, sensitive. they're fine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> at this age, I'm very better. inquisitive, and I, I just get the. Like, There's some little ones there. See so, right yeah. in the front here. Oh yeah. Here he goes up the front. Yeah, so and there's no one. So that's just peat moss from Bunnings. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, this stuff is. Yeah, this yeah. is peat moss from. But and it's funny uh, you see me on leaves and. Yeah, an almond leaves just to turn. And there's that moss. What um, temperature did you spawn them at? I just room temperature. I didn't oh, go anything. That peat has been left there from something else. <laughs> that was another little. I got a, I got a hundred uh, projects going on in this room. And, yeah. You know, I tried breeding Daphne out. I tried uh, raising. Raising uh, baby brine shrimp to full grown, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> but I, I found out a few tricks, so I've, I've got to try a few more little tricks. Yeah. One trick I read in a really good book that I got put onto. Um, I'll flash breeding, this, this one you showed me. Yeah, breeding yeah. ornamental fish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll they, flash that up on the screen for you guys. For yeah, yeah, cool. It's very hard to get though, so yeah. look it up. Uh, yeah. It's uh, out there. Um, but in that book, they say with baby brine shrimp to grow them, you've actually got to go and get seawater. You can muck around with with your, your salt and uh, and bringing it up with your carbon and hardness and all that sort of yeah. stuff, but there's nothing getting away from using sea salt. So sure. if you can get to the end of the ocean and get yourself 40 or 60 litres of sea salt and come and do it. I'm not talking about experience, I'm just talking about what yeah. I read at yeah. the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So next, yeah. uh, that'll be the next little <laughs> project. Yeah. So I can see up here you've got some of the blue stars of these? Yeah, or? yeah, these are French blueies. Yeah, I love Endless. them. They're definitely my favourite end long. I yeah. think maybe behind the um, tigers. Yeah, I've yeah. Got a ton of these back at the fish room. Yeah. But I sold a bunch, so. Did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got a lot too. Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, one question I get heaps is yeah. obviously when you get a lot of the guppies in, if you don't get them from breeders or people like you know, like experienced yeah. um, aquarists, they come in with uh, tapeworms and they yeah, come okay. skinny. And, uh, oh yeah. So did you have any guppies like as I can see you've got down here? These are yeah. uh, what are these ones? Just black bars. These are just black bars, yeah. And yeah. you've also got more, more black, black bars. bars. Wow. And more black bars. Wow. And more black bars. You can't. I, I cannot them. stop them from breeding. Yeah. So I'm did you to put females and males and then yeah. one female drops a bar. Oh, oh yes. Just... So were you getting skinny guppies at all? Every so often, yeah. Yeah. yeah I get so skinny guppies. are you treating with Pazzi Quantel? Pazzi Quantel. Is that the fluke and tapeworm tablet? No. Uh, what I've been told by a guy at uh, Fish, uh, what is it? Online yeah. um, Fish Shore up at Rothwell. Okay. Really yeah. nice bloke. His yeah. name's Jim. Um, he told me with guppies, um, try to go Epsom salts. Oh, okay. Which sounds a bit silly. But no, I've heard of that. I haven't it tried does it that, personally. but it also, it's also good for guppy bloat. Uh, yeah. What I found, um, I've had a couple of guppies in drop. Yeah. Oh, I think it's just that they're full of eggs, and I've got a few in here. Uh, uh, see if I can find well, one. This one here is getting that way. See, she's pretty yeah, big. Yeah, she's pretty fat. And uh, I've got I'll probably over there. I've got a couple. So I'll get her out and I'll put her in a Epsom salts thing. That's what that tank up there was originally for. Okay, yeah. Um, I've got a couple of sick ones in there too. But yeah, the, the thing. You get so many fish and you yeah. breed so many that it's just bound to happen. Like, yeah, it's yeah. Not even the best best breeders don't yeah. get sick fish. Yeah, it just happens because they're also so inbred at this point. Like yeah. not just your yeah. ones, but when you originally buy them. No, that, that's exactly right. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's funny. I started off with I think it was um, six males and four, four females, and yeah. look at me now. <laughs> yeah, it's you crazy. Know, had a couple of thousand. <laughs> yeah, honestly, <laughs> yeah, way more than that. Yeah, yeah. But like all these babies. Yeah. Things, yeah, it's nice. mesmerizing. And this is supposed to be just my male tank, but you know, you can see. Yeah, you can see someone's popped in here. Yeah. And, uh, well, there's heaps of females. I, I, I'd, yeah. I'd get a big scoop and I'll take a couple of hundred out at a time and just oh, flog them off. It's so hard to keep them. Yeah. You know? 
So then down here, I saw you had a, a little shrimp tank over the other side. But this is my shrimp tank. Yep. Um, yeah. Some cherries. Yeah, they, they're all over the place. Um, the one thing I found out about shrimp, if anyone tells you about the KH hardness uh, or carbonate hardness, the best bit of advice I've ever gotten about cherries, and I lost a lot of lot of uh, cherries. Uh, cherry, yeah, I've lost a lot of uh, uh, breed, like the whole lot of them died in one go. Yeah. Um, the one bit of advice I can give you, I put a piece of coral, get right. a dead piece of coral, and it will maintain your carbon hardness perfect. Okay. I think I've lost, I probably lost two cherry shrimps in about. Yeah, because you can eight, see there's a ton of them. Maybe two years. Um, yeah. Right now, it's not a good time of the year for them because Too it's hot. getting warm. Yeah. yeah, so they'll be hiding and doing all sorts of things. Actually, they're not dropping off on me anymore, but um, they're not around. I'll put and you've got that special substrate in there as well. Is that? Yeah, I've tried giving it a go. It seems to work all right. Um, I've tried it once or twice, but not not found that great. It's just odd. expensive. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, to be honest. Yeah, it's it's expensive. I've tried it. I've tried a different brand down here. I've got nothing yep. in it right now. Um, There's nothing in that tank down there. No, I've been cycling this one for a while, but I'm looking around for some blue cherries. Oh, okay, yeah. So I think that's... I know where you can get them, but I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah right, yeah. So, yeah. Well, well, that's good that you're cycling it. <laughs> yeah, well, a good mate, a good bloke I know around the corner has got some blue cherries, and oh, okay, he's real yeah. keen to find out about uh, some live food too. So Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we definitely got to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. And this so this one here, here this... More. Whoa! Yeah, I, I've got to do this. Some the thumb comparison is my thing. Yeah, yeah. Look at the size of that fish. Yeah, she's about to pop. Yeah, <laughs> for want of a better names. word, but um, yeah, huge bronze can... coys, are they? Yeah. Are they? yeah, yeah, yeah. My biggest problem with these guys, those are huge. Is that I don't think I've got a male. I, I've actually got a few new ones. Yeah, they look like females, but then there's a little. Yeah, that might be a male there. Well, I, I've got a, the smaller ones. I've only just got in yeah. in the last few weeks. Yeah. So are they this, long fins, those ones. There is a long fin, like yeah. this bloke coming out here now, he's yeah. a long fin, got him by accident. <laughs> <laughs> so he breeds and you can... Yeah, yeah, that will be good. Um, as you can see, Guppy's in here, tried to take the males, of another, one of them bred, and one oh of them had gosh. a couple of babies and there's a male scooting around, I just found him this morning. People out there are going to love this video. Oh. Yeah. And this, I mean, I'm surprised how much Java moss you can create in this fish room. Oh, look at like, this. This is unreal. Goes honestly. berserk. Yeah. Uh, how quick, so if you took out that, like, in, okay, so when you take out Java moss, yeah. is that you taking it out after? Like, like have you taken out of that recently? Um, I took a bit out for you the other day. Okay, yeah. Um, so how quick does that replenish? That tank over there, I took a bunch out. Yeah, well, look, I, I scoot it all back. I don't really take much note because yeah. it just keeps on growing and growing yeah. and growing, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I love I love green. I love, um, I love your weed for all sorts yeah. of reasons. The one reason I love it is because if your green it's... starts dropping off, it tells you there's something wrong with your water perimeters. Yeah. So you've got to start investigating why things are going berserk. Yeah, definitely. Um, but when a healthy tank's got good, healthy green growth in it, you yeah. Know? Um, the other thing I, I, I was told those these, aren't aquatic. Those ones, yeah. These, yeah. But the reason I have got these in here for is because when these blokes spawn, they love spawning underneath the leaves. Mm, yeah, I have to give you some anubias when I next. Yeah, back, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And the good thing about that sort of thing is what I normally do is when they lay eggs, I scrape them off, yeah. put them in my shrimp tank. Um, oh, and the shrimp clean them. Yep, the shrimp clean them, keep them right. And you can take the leaf off and leave the leaf floating around. Yeah. And when they when they uh, and then they finish the and they eat it. Yeah. So yeah. Mm, right. So I'm it. really keen to see these live food cultures. Yeah. You know, okay. What are, you, what are you culturing at the moment? Lots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brian shrimp, which yeah. you do. Yeah. Um, Walter worms, or look, you might call these micro worms. Yeah. Uh, I call them Walter worms, but they're probably yeah. the same thing, as you can see. Yeah, those are you know? Yeah, I'd these, like the same. Yeah. yeah, exactly. These are extremely easy to do, like you've done them they're before. Awesome for fry. Oh, yeah. I find rainbow fish fry. Uh, smell a bit. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. They, no, they smell awful, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So these. Yeah. So you can see that. That's that's pretty easy. All it is. The base. Okay. Yep. All I'm doing is uh, um, porridge. No. Porridge, porridge, yeah. Porridge and a bit of yeast. So, oh, you just yeast. dried yeast. I, I got a, I, I bought a heap of it to yeah. that little bottle over there. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, sorry about that. That's all good. <laughs> so, yeah, you put a bit of yeast in it. Once it starts cooling down, you put the yeast in it, give it a stir, put a little bit yeah. in each one. But, here's the problem I have with, um, with these things. When you're doing live, fish, live food, it's just you don't want to turn everything into a job. Now, yeah. I go along the lines of you, keeping fish simple, you don't want to yeah. turn it into a job. So, my advice, if anyone's getting into this, try to get something a bit bigger than that. Say about that round, yeah. with a lid that just comes off. But yeah. make sure it's tight. 
put a decent sized hole in the top. Yeah. So these are just little holes. They're not really good, I found. They work, but they're yeah. not really good. Not as prolific, the yeah. cultures. So yeah. put a decent sized hole in. Now, a lot of people around the world are saying you put a bit of sponge in, and that stops all the creepy crawlies from yeah. getting yellow, like uh, fruit flies and whatever. Mites, mites yeah. are a big issue. I've got mite problems. Um, so if you can get some of that steel, steel uh, wool, uh, not wool, steel mesh, I'll show yeah. you a bit of it. Yeah. A bit of it here amongst my junk. Oh, wool. right. Okay. So you can get yeah. a piece of that, cut it out, just so it goes over the hole. Hot glue it? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Hot yeah. glue gun. Glue's on. I've right. got a piece down uh, here. I use some of the, uh, <coughs> what's it called, the cotton? The filter yep. cotton? Yeah, I'm just... How'd you go? It. Yeah, good, actually, because, but, like, I mean, I'm in a pretty enclosed yeah. like, area. I yep. it's only I go in there, so... So what I found with the cotton wool, it's through trial and error. We'll move on to the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The grindle yeah. worms. Now... Oh, right. These are the ones I'm keen on seeing. So here's right. the grindle worms. Sorry about all the mess, everybody. Grindle are, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, these are slightly smaller than white worms. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so you can see that culture. Bit pongy, um, that's all right. but it's sort of good. My biggest problem here is this is my own fault, is the fact that... Yeah, it is a bit pongy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and these these are on their way out. This this yeah. lot here I'll be taking away. These pads are really good. You can see the mites and just things yeah, are yeah. really hard to get rid of. Yeah, but no. the good thing about these pads, you can take this pad out of here, put it in your next culture, get some nice fresh um, potting mix, moisten you, up a bit. I was going to ask you that question as well. Yeah. Do you um, sterilize that potting mix? No, I don't, um, because I find that if you sterilize, you take out the stuff these guys eat, eat. as well. Okay. Um, but I, that's not my problem. My problem is, so you can see this, they're like um, they're micro worms no, or okay. Walter worms, right? Yeah. Somehow, my own fault, I've probably been, been using my brush because the way I, uh, I catch these is... Oh, you brush them. So, I get a bit of... This is just normal uh, rainwater. rainwater. Yeah. Oh, rain. A lot of rainwater. Yep. Uh, I harvest rainwater for this very reason. So, I grab it. I use the old yep. brush, put it in there. And they all sink to the bottom eventually, right? Yeah, they will. So, my mistake was, I did that. Instead of cleaning the brush or using a separate brush altogether, I did all that, and I got a second one of these, and then I did my Walter worms. Chucked oh, okay. them in there, cleaned them out. Well, that brush yeah, somehow has gone from that it. to that, and it only takes only takes a couple of those little buggers in here, yeah. and they go berserk. And they're out competing for the food. Yeah, okay. not so bad with the Grindles. They seem to get on okay together. Yeah. Um, when yeah. it starts crashing, it crashes. That's a small one. And like sure. I said to you earlier, Nick, it's best to go big, especially if you've got. <laughs> Especially if you got a, um, this is going to be really pointy. Yeah, yeah, but look I'm at ready. this. This is what I mean about the. Whoa. Look at those, those worms. Are micro, yeah. They're all micro worms. Yeah, They're micro going nuts. The They're thing. crazy. Yeah. The glass things are really good to harvest because look at that. You know, there is yeah. heaps on there. We'll uh, tell your wife to skip this bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, they don't get into this. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll just put these little buggers in here and. Yeah. You know. I'll get a home in some. So you're feeding grindle worms to what fish? Everything. Everything? Yeah. Everything loves grindle worms. Grindle worms are great. Or oh, what I do find what is What about that... like quarries? Are they too small to eat? No, quarries love them. Quarries okay. love them. But I'll tell you what is, <laughs> when we get over the white worms. Yeah, I'm pretty keen to see those. Yeah. yeah. The white worms are not really prolific at the moment, but they're going to be prolific and I'll show you why. Okay. But um, nothing better than watching a quarry belting around the bottom of your tank with a great big white worm hanging Yeah, I mouth. love it. It's, <laughs> it's awesome. He's, uh, yeah, <laughs> they do love their um, they do love their white worms. Yeah, and it's good because you know one white worms are like a steak meal to them. So yeah, yeah, it is. And it, it's so good for breeding. Yeah, and the other thing too is it's really cost effective. It yes. seems because I spend a ton on black worms. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I'll be changing up my strategies. I mean, going into the summer because there's going to be lots of breeding going on. Yeah, um, to make sure that I'm more cost effective because. Yeah, I can't be spending the amount of money I'm spending on black worms. No, that's right. Yeah, it's that's right. And so. I've got a couple little things to show you with the black worms. Yeah, are you so are you trips. culturing black worms as well? Oh, I am. Yeah. 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 Have you found found them to be? Well, are they over here? Yeah, they're up the top. See that little shallow tank up there? Okay, I'll right. See if I can get a light on it for you. Yeah. yeah one of the tips. Beautiful air. So. Okay. Uh, see that sponge there? Yep. See how it's got all those worms hanging out of it? Uh, which sponge? That one. Yeah, that one. See all, yeah. the, see all the worms hanging out? Yep. Yeah. So what you do... When you so grab that out and squeeze it? No. Uh, hang on a sec. So you can see there's worms. They all hang out in the substrate all the time. 
So what do I do to feed them? I just boil some uh, broccoli. Yep. They love broccoli. They go berserk. I should have put a piece in. See, there's another one with a whole bunch hanging out. Yeah. So you can give them a bit of broccoli, like once a week maybe, yep. and they'll eat it. But these things here are the best way to harvest them for your fish. So what you do, you get a piece of that sponge. I should have had a piece ready earlier. That's all good. But say you got a piece of sponge, but a nice chunky piece of sponge. Yep. Like, oh, that's a filter. And if you can't get a sink, maybe put a little bit of lead sinker in it, put a little slit in one end, and get a um, uh, a veggie wafer. Like, you know, one of your green wafers? Yeah. Yeah, it's just an algae wafer. Yeah, algae wafer, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> veggie wafer. I see algae. you're using the. Um, Oh, so okay, right. You've just put some in there. Yeah, yeah, that's just there. Say, so you're just feeding the, <laughs> the crap. I'm not on commission from home <laughs> brand. Yeah, I won't. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, promote yeah, that one. You just put an algae wafer in the end of there. Just mm -hmm. you know, when you cut a slit in, you put it inside so it's in the middle. Yep. You drop it in there, and they all go into that sponge to in, get that in, algae yeah. wafer. Then all you do is, I'm um, oh, gonna make. You can grab one out. Trust yeah. your tweezers. <laughs> and because of that. Now these blokes I know. Yeah, them. we'll uh so you yeah, just, I'll come over this side. She's grabbing it. You just grab the whole thing out. And that's full of black worms. Just drop it in there. And they'll just graze on it? Yeah, so So in there's just like a fishing sinker? Yeah, yeah, okay. it's just a slider sort of oh, right. So all the other fish are ripping into it. But once me little quarries, I've got the I've got Venice orange Venice whale and quarries in yeah. there. When they discover it there, out. they just hang off it like it's, it's their life. I'll see if I can put a bit of light on if that's going to make any difference. You've got a lot of plants. Yeah, try to. So here's one of them. See, they'll get a whiff. You can see all the, yeah, there's a few so hanging out the side and a few coming out here and there. there. I just got to get these blokes to find it. Once they go. find it, they're a little bit shy. Yeah, I find the um, Venezuelan seem to be not that active. Yeah, Corey's, compared here he to some comes. Of the other stuff. Oh, yeah, he's found out. Come on, Blake. Smelling, smelling. Mm. Got a customer. Yeah. Oh, he's going past. Oh. But, so anyway. how many worms do you reckon are in there? Well, a couple of hundred, maybe. Oh, really? That many? Well, well, look, maybe a hundred. Okay. Maybe, maybe 150, something like that. But so, they're all, and they'll keep on coming out all day long as, until those, these guys finish them up. Are those black worms, are they prolific? Yeah. Compared to the, um, like, so you're just feeding the broccoli. Yeah, a bit of broccoli, and, and if you want to chuck an algae wafer in here and there. The yeah. only problem with these things is they get a bit woofy. Um, well, the woman I originally bought it off, she was putting um, she was putting all sort of compost in there, which was great, but it yeah. made it stink. So I just put broccoli in there. It's a real shallow tank. You don't have to have a yeah. shallow tank, but um, yeah. Space effective. Yeah, so yeah, this is just a spare tank I had laying around, so I put it in there, and it works pretty well. And that's lava rock up there, is it? Yeah, a bit of lava rock. See, it, look. There's a black one there, but yeah, yeah. normally if there wasn't enough food in there, you'd see thousands of them all along the front here. Right, so how long did it take you to develop that culture up there? Um, not too long, really. And that's just a little sponge filter as well? Yeah, just a sponge filter over the back. Cool. Um, that's just for my own peace of mind, I guess, to try to keep it a bit cleaner. Yeah. But um, yeah, the way, the best, well, what I've been told, what I've, I've, I've learned off YouTube is, yeah, th these worms, when you cut them in half, they'll form two worms. Uh, like yeah, yeah, that's what I've been yeah. trying to do. Yeah. So you so, go in there and stir it up? Yeah, so what I do, I get a, a knife and I just run it through the oh, rock a bit. Knife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit savage. Yeah. But another guy, what he was doing was grabbing a little uh, pump from a filter, yeah, I saw putting it in there. Them up. Yeah. yeah, so they get sucked in the pump and so, stuck you know, out. Yeah. Well, I think that's if I was going to die, I'd rather be knife rather than chopped into yeah. a, uh, a shredder. <laughs> <laughs> because it so, would be not nice. <laughs> so these are some Adolphi quarries? Yeah, oh, yep. Cool yep. They haven't got... Uh, they, oh. They've got a bit of growing up to do before they get They've got a lot, of, a lot of growing up to do, but the thing about them is that the orange isn't really prolific and I'm it's kind of thinking that they're it's trying to blend in with their sand. Yeah it's a substrate Maybe. for sure I reckon. Yeah. Well, I yeah. did have um I had a sick one in there a while ago but he come good. I think the tank wasn't cycled enough but you can see the plants are going berserk. This one here. That, yeah it was only way down there when I first put it in now it's going berserk yeah. which which to me is a good that's sign. Good. Yeah. Really good yeah. sign. That's yeah. uh, something I picked up from you. Is, yeah. Uh, plant tactics. So yeah, yeah. They're really cool quarries. I haven't actually got these oh, yet. Yeah. But um I love these bikes. Doing it. Um, yeah, well, maybe, I know you've got black Venezuelans, so maybe we can do a deal when you breed yeah, them. Yeah, when I breed, I breed them, and you can breed them, and <laughs> yeah. we can do a swap. So these, these are my breeding neons. Sure, um, yeah. 
but you can see the yeah, you can see the little bit of neon tetra disease, and that's yeah, something yeah. I find that it's most of the time actually in my experience now with neons not lethal. Yeah, for a very long time, and it's not as contagious if you've got like a yeah. stable aquarium. Yeah, and also find that if they haven't, if they're not competing for food, they feed more, which yeah. gives them more resilience, and they, yeah. it actually starts. See, he would have been a lot worse too. They, I've had them which been right across so their mouth, well. and they yeah, they can't yeah. eat as well when they've got it on their mouth. That's but. right. Yeah. And what I've been told, they get bred in farms, and they uh, when they breed in farms, they just give them what they have to to live. You yeah. Know? And, and you know they breed so many that yeah. uh, instead of Millions. catching them out, they weigh them. Oh and yeah. Then, yeah. So yeah, just, okay. yeah, like a hundred neons weighs this much, and then <laughs> wow, they, they weigh them instead of counting them. But well, I was told in Australia, three and a half million a year they, they breed themselves. Honestly, these um these are diamond head uh, wow, neon I've tetras. For a bit. Yeah, and, and glow light tetras. You try and breed those. Yes, I am. Yeah. yeah, I got them just not they that long ago. Fat. Yeah, look like they're ready to go. Funny thing is, I only just Male noticed there that. And a female there. And, and yeah. even the glow lights. Look at that one. She's a bit fat oh, too. Yeah. Which, yeah. Yeah, yeah I give that a go. <laughs> so many, so many uh, so, projects and so little yeah, time. Yeah, I know. And these <laughs> yeah. are vinegar eels. Vinegar eels. Yeah, I've got a big culture right here. Yeah. And um, that's the one what I do take you out. Use the vinegar eels for. Uh, babies, uh, baby, anything. In actual fact, even guppies and, and, and the tetras, everything will okay. take them. Um, you, you drop them in the water, and I, the, the good thing, I, as you can probably tell by now, I love my nano fish. I love yeah, small yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah, you definitely do. The smaller fish in a bigger tank, like this one here, and I've got an eight foot and a six foot coming. Yeah. Um, I just want to see thousands of them in a big it's area. It's mesmerizing. All yeah. these danios. Yeah. They're so cute. So this one is another. It, and every fish in this tank, I bred every single fish. That's cool. That's the only, there's three neons in there. I bred those. <laughs> Very proud of that. Yeah. Uh, and the other 25 will be going in once they're big enough. Um, all the Danios and the... Uh, and you the, bred those long fin zebra? No, leopard, are they? Yeah. Um, they're cool. Yeah. Them. yeah. Um. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I bred every one of those. And I'm pretty happy. That that tank's been a big experiment of mine. I've got a matte filter in one end, as you can see. Yep. I've done a divider here, so I do two sorts of two substrate, stuff, yeah. mucking around. Um, there's also another a mechanical matte filter there. So that goes into a uh, canister filter underneath. Sure, yeah, um, it's big. And it's got a big matte there. Um, so the canister filter's down here. Yeah, yeah, got yeah, bits of stuff everywhere. Um, yeah, big fan of canisters, and, and that's working really great. Yeah, I'm a big fan of canisters. Yeah. Um, there's another thing I I, I uh, learnt on your old YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's something I learned on YouTube, and I'll just grab this thing and give you a little yep. glance. And I'm not a salesman for anything, no. but Sun Sun make these little. I've seen those. Yeah. Yeah, little pre filters. So what a bloke said to soup up your canister filters. One thing is to put a sponge on the intake. Yeah. That's one thing, and then. Wants to come off for me? Uh, yeah. Put a pre filter on yep. first. So, what they're saying, and I'm believing it, although I haven't tried it yet. So, these are three sponges. Yep. Just goes in and comes out. Use this for your sponge. Now, that's back to front, yep, but I'll yep, fix sure. it later. So, put that on first. Have your all your junk comes through this one and then goes into your normal canister filter. It saves the uh, first. It saves the canister filter. Exactly. Oh, okay, right. Everything in your set canister filter should be uh, biological uh, water. Yeah, yeah, like your, um, you know, your noodles and, and I, I like to use coral and I use uh, uh, what do they call it? A macropore. I love the macropore stuff. Right. Um, clean that up pretty well. It like that polishes the water really well. Cool. Um, so your whole canister filter is just one great big uh, yeah. biological. Yeah. Uh, filter system going on awesome the more biological filter as you know the yeah. better it is yeah, for all yeah, your fish sure. you know yeah turns um yeah dead. so Sorry. that's my next um that's my next little invention but then 30 bucks each so i've been super keen to get to this area of your room now yeah. it's going to be really boring to anyone else who yep. doesn't know what this is but this so place this... is just my, my last community tank oh, yeah. but this that's just a junk zebs tank. and yeah, yeah a bit of everything barbs yeah <laughs> and <laughs> These, a lot of java moss a lot of java moss so, and I you've taken you, half this, so yeah. <laughs> I want to explain. <clears throat> well, I want you to explain exactly what this is. Okay, so this is just straight out of wine fridge. I bought this second hand. What yeah. I learned about white worms is they can't go above 20 degrees. As soon as they go above 20 degrees, they just die. Knocks them on the head. Yeah, yeah. They, they really go to town. Now, I haven't got very good examples to show you here, but I've got some examples. The other thing is, the one bit of advice I can give to anyone from any country, when you watch a YouTube video, try to have a look and see what's going on outside because yeah. when I learned about white worms the thing I seen was there was snow outside <coughs> yeah cold Sorry. yeah yeah so it's cold 
there might be central heating, but there's always that coal going on. In Australia, you need to keep your white worms in a fridge. Yeah. Oh, we got Hello, doggy. Yeah, yeah rocket. <laughs> Hello, Superstar rocket. rocket. Anyway, so get yourself one of these. Right. These are also good for breeding infusoria. Yeah, that's which the got thing going. I've been having trouble with because infusoria, I didn't know it needed to be cold. Yeah. So, well, I don't know if it does need to be cold. I just get better results when it's cold. Yeah, well, I mean, I learned from Mark's Aquatics, and he comes from yeah, uh, well, that, Wales, is it? Yeah, that yeah. should be on 18. It's normally 17, 18 degrees yeah. in there, but I've just opened the fridge. It takes no time for it to go back up. Yeah. So this is not a very good example because of... The micro worms. The micro worms, and there's some mites. Well, there's a lesson to be learned here. Yeah, but... see these damn little buggers? I'll get some... Oh, a little fly flying too. Put a light on the subject. So they've gone berserk, and not so bad with the grindle worms, they don't muck them around, but the white worms, they yes. just don't get on, they compete too hard for food. This is putrid because I haven't fixed yeah, it up, and she's about to crash. Yeah, that's done. <laughs> so that's, that'll and be done. What and kind of potting mix are you using as well? I'm just using, um, um, what is it, uh, yeah, it's yeah. just, um, <laughs> bad smelling. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's putrid, that's a bad one. So, yeah, just the potting mix is, um, Cutting and um, uh, seed raising, seed okay. raising mix. Sorry. Okay, yeah. So this is a new one. You can see all the white worms yep. going around. They're all through this. As I say, it's just putting, oh, you know, like um, <coughs> seed raising mix. Not a real good example, but there's a few in here. There's those damn things again. I've got to change this food out today. Mites um, affect anything? No, they don't seem to worry. They don't worry the worms at all. You can see the but worms there. They, um, very new culture, is it? Yeah, it is a very well. I say a new culture; it's probably about two weeks old. When a, you get them going, you need about thing, four to six weeks. I think a good thing about this culture is that it's um, when the worms are in the ground, it's normally a good sign that the, it is. the soil is good. Yep, yep, but, uh, it's great. So, is this um, uh, whole meal bread? It's nine grain. Nine grain. Yeah, yeah I've done the whole meal and I've got the whole meal in the freezer. But what I find is a nine grain. What is more important than anything is um, baker's yeast. Yeah. And um, and kiffer, um, kiffer oh, is like oh, a yogurt. The yogurt the yeah, the yogurt. and I'll show you that in a sec. Yeah, yeah. But um, I you can just get the brewer's yeast, not baker's yeast. Sorry, brewer's, brewer's okay. yeast. It's yeah, which is food, that stuff, right? Yep. So it's just a powder. Yep. But it's brewer's yeast. You can get that from Woolies. Uh, so the right Woolies. So that's bread. Yep, with yes. the yogurt. Bread with the kiffer. Kiffer. Yep. kiffer. And then kiffer. the yeast. Um, and and yeast down. on top. And, and yeah, you face it down. Hang on, I'll just go and get some of this yeah, kiffer yeah, you sure. It's very easy to find. Wow. It's crazy. I love seeing these hobby rooms. Oop, sorry. Awesome. So that's that's the kiffer. Okay, right. There's about six different brands. Make sure you don't get it with stuff in it yeah, like you, you, know, like you can get natural. flavored yeah, yeah as natural as you can yeah I, i've got i've used about three or four different sorts and there's no different to each one sure um this is not a very good example neither is the last one but when these things are in full flight you can put this bread in yep. and in four days it'll just be gone okay right and because i use the nine grain all that's left behind is grains so you've been okay so your crap well i mean did you crash because of uh those micro worms a couple of reasons i crashed the yeah, micro worms is one yeah the bad thing was i went away and i wired my shed wrong these are all crashed they've got to go <clears throat> okay so what happens one of these was going berserk and i tell you when i say berserk you, you can hardly like there, there'll be a group of worms around the edge here that's thicker than your finger. Like the worms aren't, oh, but there's millions yeah, of them awesome, but thicker. And I'll yeah. tell you what, for a fish, like I call ourselves fish nuts. Yeah. For fish nuts, you see that, no, and you awesome. think, oh, I just think these. how many fish am I going to breed with that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I get that way. They're all over the loop, the roof, or the lid. Yeah. So bad, I can't clean them off. So I just dunk the whole thing in. Oh. And these guys go berserk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can imagine. Anyway, uh, unfortunately, I haven't got a good example to show you right now. This one will go berserk soon. Yeah. Sometimes it can be like that one week, three days later, they're thick all around. Because oh, yeah. they it's get awesome. to the point where they just start evacuating, I yeah. suppose, and they just come out. But they'll eat that bread like there's so, no tomorrow. So yours, um, did the fridge turn off or something? And then that was... Yeah, so what happened? Wired it up wrong. And oh, I had a mate okay. looking after the place, and I wired it up with the lighting, unfortunately. Oh, um, so it's turning on and off. Generally. Well, so... Keeping fish simple. I've oh, yeah. my whole place up so I can... 
Turn them off. Oh, right. Okay. You got the Wi Fi plugs, or is it the, the these are special type of remote plug? Oh, it's just a remote plug. Yeah, oh, it's cool. real simple. $40. Oh. <laughs> four, four plugs and That's that awesome. thing. And you can turn Yeah, anyway. So, um, so yeah. this mate, good mate of mine was coming and feeding my fish, and what happened? I wired him up to the lights, and he didn't have the lights running through the day, so this fridge went hot. Well, it went oh, room okay. temperature, and I come home, and the whole lot was crashed, and I'm really oh. struggling to get them going. That's my saving grace. As soon as this goes, there's nothing in that one yet. Yeah. As soon as this one goes off, I'll get it on that one and so forth. Yeah. Um, I think the way we're going to get the, the there's no um, there's no uh, white worms or not, sorry not white worms, there's no micro worms in that one as of yet, which okay, is great. Cool. So once that explodes, I can take the worms right. out of that, get this one going, and then I can get rid of this all together. Uh, I'm going to definitely make sure I don't get any micro yeah. worms in mine. And then these are just Grindle up here. No, they're all it's it's crash systems, crash. Oh, and okay. they got those. Bleeding. So this has all got to be cleaned out. Okay, just, cool. Don't right. look at it. No, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hey, so I was going to actually show you them and show you what not to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've learned a lot from this um, from seeing that <laughs> yeah so okay potting uh no seed starting mix yep i'll show you and then you wet it and then yeah you get okay. it now according to the youtube people you get to see you squeeze it and not much water comes out so okay. what i do i put it in there and i just get a squirt bottle all around the top like almost mud but not quite mm -hmm. like even less yeah if you can squeeze it and water comes out i think it's a bit too far gone okay but um, you don't want to get it sodden straight away because the idea is when I put the bread in I give the bread a bit of a squirt of water and it's got to be fish tank water yeah. So you give it a bit of a squirt of water the, the bread goes soft and the worms attack it They, they seem yeah. to go for the moisture and then they get into the kiffer and, and the brewer's yeast They go nuts yeah, they, are, they do, they go yeah. nuts um, So your saving grace I guess in this fish room at the moment is the black worms um, The grindles actually The grindles, okay. The grindles are nuts um, The uh, brine shrimp that's yeah, been fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the brine fish. That's fill proof. Yeah, yeah it is. Make sure you got eggs. Yeah, <laughs> and and the Walter worms. Yeah. The Walter worms or the micro worms. Um, they're both saving yeah, grace. I don't use worms. much micro worms in my room. I only use it for some of the early stages yeah. of the fry. Yeah. Because what I've found is, oh, not from personal experience, but just other YouTube people. Yeah. Is that they find that it um, stunts the fins of oh. young fry. Oh, okay. Because it doesn't have enough nutrient nutrients. Yeah. In it, um, yeah. Compared to the brine shrimp, so I try and just use that like. In between, so if I have koi fry like newborn, yeah, I'll get the micro yeah. worms, and then yep. they go straight to baby brine. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, I yeah. I mix both of them. I, I I probably use the uh, Walter worms for fillers, and I use them for um, yeah, like baby guppies too. Yeah. Um, what I find with the micro worms or Walter worms is yeah. that you put them in a tank that's a community tank with lots of babies and lots of adults. Yeah. The babies can find them easier than yeah, the adults. Yeah, because the adults just go past them. Yeah, definitely. and they smash them. Um, especially if you've got one of those ones that's infected. So you put a whole bunch yeah. of grindles in with the, with the Walter worms. The big fish go for the grindles and the baby yeah. goes for the Walters and they're all happy. But, awesome. yeah, the brine shrimp's great. Um, so I think we've covered everything, have yeah. we? Yeah. Daphnia. Oh, Daphnia, yeah. yeah. No. Like, you don't do Daphnia? I would love to do Daphnia. I got eggs from Daphnia here somewhere. Um, this tank here was a Daphnia tank once. It was going all right for about three weeks. I did everything that they that I've been I've learned about. Um, I put green water in, which I got cultivating outside. Yeah, yeah. I put the yeast in. I did that. I gave a water change. Yeah. What they're saying overseas is feed, feed, water change, feed, feed, water change, feed them every day. So feed, feed, and then a water change every third day. It's got to be a water change. Um, oh, bloody hell! <coughs> my wife's a bit busy, and I don't like to use it as an excuse. I just couldn't keep up to it. So yeah. you know, for what it's worth. And I was at a fish shop this morning, uh, Tech Den, yeah, yeah. Um, they got frozen Daphne and I just bought it this morning, okay. so I'm going to give it a go at some stage. It's see expensive, if it works. but. 395 Okay, right. So not, not too bad. bad. Um, Depends how many fish you've got. <laughs> it does. Yeah. It does. Um, at the end of the day, I think um, you know, I'll just be using it to try to bring them on. Uh, sorry, this is not very That's all good. And mosquito larvae too will probably talk about as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Daphnia. No, oh, classic. Yeah. I've seen that before, yeah. Yeah, I, I've never really, yeah, anyway. So I use Cyclops as well sometimes. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they're alright. Yeah. But... Um, fairy shrimp. Oh, yeah. No, 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 master shrimp. Is that what? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. So here, yeah, it's is... not very good. Okay. Yeah. Is this an experiment for you as well? So this is mosquito, mosquito larvae. larvae. That turned up and the infusoria went. So I think oh, mosquito okay. larvae eats that. So, listen. Oh, I thought you were trying to culture the mosquito larvae. 
Well, that's what it's turned into. <laughs> yeah, and a big accident, yeah. Yeah, so what I do, I've got a scooper there that's really fine, and I come in and grab all these, yeah. but I'll only let them go so far because, you know, none of us want malaria. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yep. <coughs> awesome. Well, and then with the vinegar eels, I haven't played with these before. Mm. But what do you... They are yeah. very, very easy. You've got to do that torch. It's hard it's to see here. them. Oh, there it is. Yep. Very hard to see them. Uh, can you pick up on that? See all those little... Oh, at the top. Yeah, see they're just in there, you can see them wriggling in there. Oh yeah. Just see them. Yeah. Is that the floss there? This is, yeah, basically just um, wool, like um, filter okay. wool. So, what I've been told to do is 50-50 um, uh, apple, apple cider, cider vinegar and water. Put that in there, the couple of slices of apple, and it lasts for a long, long time. You let them go. Now, that looks really rotten, but it's absolutely jockers with vinegar eels. So you just take a squeeze of that out, chuck it in here, they start breeding, they go nuts, then you put that in the top there, you have the water yeah. level down to about here somewhere, you put your floss in with a bit of string on so you can get it out, Yeah. Um, drop it in there, put fresh water in the top. The eels will go through this and come up into the fresh water because they're chasing the oxygen, yeah. and then you just use a little syringe, a little syringe, yeah. like so. Suck it up. You get these from a reject shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And just suck it up, squirt it in your tank. Now, yeah, we might. Uh, it's very hard to see them. They you can small. see them, but they're very, very small. These are very tiny. Yeah. These fish can see them. They're going nuts. See, they're, they're really chasing they're them again now. But baby fish love it. You know, baby fish absolutely adore the vinegar eels. Uh, it's just another way to get them to start feeding, you know. Yeah. Like whatever you breed, it, it, you know yourself. You can get yeah. them to spawn, but getting them through that first I've week <laughs> is a big one. Yeah, and I've found lately getting them to even fertilize the eggs has been a bit of a challenge, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So, anyways, well, yeah. So I, I do that and then I put a bit more water in. Oh, yeah. like to keep it's it nice and stuff. It's just straight tank water. Cool. A bit rotty in there. Awesome. Anyway. Sweet, so well, yeah. thanks Peter. Um, I think, yeah. is there anything else in here that we <laughs> haven't <laughs> looked at? Um, I don't even think of right now. Um, been doing a bit of experimentation with the quarries. Um, making a system up so that I can cool the tank down. Oh, okay. Like, if I can drop it 10 degrees yeah. in half an hour, it replicates rainwater. Rainfall. Yeah, yeah, yeah rainwater. And, and that yeah. worked on those ones over there. Unfortunately, something I had to do a bit of research on, but females will lay eggs even if there is not a male present. Yeah, so, oh, so you got all excited and... Yeah, yeah and they laid a couple of hundred out. eggs. I put them over here and none of them match. Crickets. And they did it for three days. Okay, three yeah, they, days worth of spawning and it was all over the glass, all leaves. over the leaves, all in the side. Everywhere, they're even in the substrate, they're all over the substrate. I sucked a lot of them out, probably 90% and not one. And right. and that's what I've learned, that's why I bought a few more yeah. and I'm hoping they're males. But Very hard to see. It seems like with the other Anais, the albinos, you're doing a really, really good job, so. These are the parents here. These two here. <laughs> well, that's it, only a pair. They spit them out. Like, if I change this water now, I'd have eggs all over there tomorrow. And I just cannot stop these two. Is this a bumblebee goby that you just bought? Yes, yeah, two there, because I've got two this one here. So, what I learned about gum bumblebee gobies is they say, oh yeah, they'll eat anything. Well, they love live food. And a little freshwater clownfish. Yeah, kind of, yeah, I suppose. Anyway, so, I had three in here, and they were going okay. They were going okay, but... They just, I, I lost one and then I lost another one yeah. and they seem to be competing for food too much. So okay. what happened is I started feeding these guys live worms. I don't know why that one's sitting on the side, but... Oh, you get that with all kinds of... Yeah, it's two of them. Better check the water from this. Anyway, um, yeah, so as soon as I started giving them live food, he went berserk. So right. I, I, live food is the answer for bumblebee gobies. I think it's the answer for anything. If you've got live food, yeah. you've got really good chances yeah. of having really healthy fish. Yeah. And just shows you how many fish you can breed as well if you have live food. It's yeah. just completely game changing. Yeah, I can't believe it's absolutely, yeah. how much fry you've got in this tank. Yeah, well, that's nuts. Huh. Yeah. yeah. I just got wow. two more pet shops or, or aquariums today that are going to take some of my fish off me. Yeah. So that's pretty good news. Well, so, yeah. thanks so much, Peter. It's no been worries. An awesome time having a Nick, look at all this stuff. Really great to meet you, mate. And yeah. uh, thanks for all the video work you've done in the past. We, um, I've been inspirational. Um, a lot of stuff here has been through YouTube. Um, cost me a lot of money, but it's been fun. Oh, a it's lot of awesome. Fun. It's the best thing that you can do. <laughs> yeah. I love fish keeping. Yeah. All right, well, wrap it up here. Thanks, guys, so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.